Hello, everyone. Hello. Now we are ready to start our webinar of uh, Correct TG. Yeah. Uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning. Good morning to Omar, right? Yes, morning. Yeah. Yeah, today's topic is Correct TGA, and we prepare six interesting cases. Uh, our three doctors will present the cases, and also the one speaker fr from Saudi, Dr. Omar Gala, will talk about the natural history of CCTJ and the AHA guideline, etc. And we have uh, several distinguished panelists Chang Ali from Sejong General Hospital, Shingo Kasahara from Okayama University Hospital. And uh, Dr. Songhae Kim, Sanada, Ueda, Yoshimoto, and Sato from Sichoka Children's Hospital, and Satoshi Yaskoch from Nagano Children's Hospital. Okay, I would like to call on our first uh, speak doctor. Dr. So will present about the anatomy of the uh, correct TJ briefly. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's gl very glad to meet you. Uh, all, although we are uh, virtual, not real, but we can still enjoy the real figure of the- Dong-ho, we could not hear you well. Sorry. So, Dong-ho. So uh, I'll show briefly for uh, a forearm. This is very big part. Uh, I don't know, uh, which is uh, uh, 30. Don't hold. Uh, Hi, this is Warakan. Can I, I cannot hear you well. Sorry for that. OK. Can you hear the Dr. Sos? Hello? No. No? No? Well, oh, just very distant. Very distant. OK. Yeah. How about you? Sorry, uh, hello? Yes, hello? because yeah, now we're here. But... Thank you, sir. Hello? I'm sorry, it's the first time for us to try this kind of webinar. So there is some mix up. Please understand. So um, my English is still very poor. So you can watch the specimen rather than hearing my voice. <laughs> anyway, thank you again for joining this session. Uh, this heart is a 38 year old man with a uh, huge heart uh, and with a regurgitation of left sided atrial ventricular valve, which is replaced by tissue valve uh, for uh, repair. Of the, uh, and you can see here the left, left sided right ventricle is markedly thickened wall, and there is a clear uh, soft valvula in fundibulum on the left side, which is uh, sub-aortic infundibulum on the left side. So this is clearly corrected TGA with intact ventral septum uh, found uh, complicated with a regurgitation of left-sided AV valve uh, developed in the uh, adult period. So now we, we, don't ha uh, we can only rarely see this kind of occasion, but still it's an issue for adult congenital heart disease uh, nowadays. So the, uh, if we examine the details of the, this heart specimen, we can imagine how, how is the uh, left, uh, right sided uh, ventricle, which is left, left ventricle with a in, uh, clear uh, septal surface, and uh, this is uh, a permanent valve. And there is a membrane septum here, which is uh, very elongated posteriorly, such that the, there is a, the uh, offset of mitral and tricuspid valve in different way. That means that the normal atrial ventricle valve on the right atrium is not present uh, because of this big uh, membrane septum, but the AV node is displaced anteriorly to this side 
so that uh, there is an uh, aberrant conduction pathway to the ventricles. Uh, next specimen is still uh, big, but this 80 year old, old boy uh, with uh, corrected PGA with VSD and pulmonary atresia uh, with PDA. So this is right sided ventricle with left, left ventricular morphology. This is mitral valve. This is a VSD. And there is no outlet to pulmonic valve, although there is a uh, uh, the uh, pulmonary valve, pulmonary trunk on the uh, right posteriorly. On the left side ventricle is uh, right ventricle with uh, aort subaortic in fundibulum with aortic coronary arteries. And also we can see the VSD. The shape of VSD is quite different from the usual situation in, uh, in the normal uh, without uh, corrected transposition. So uh, we can examine carefully how is the shape of the VSD and how is the attachment of uh, a little uh, corda of tricuspid valve on the left sided tricuspid valve, which may obstruct the uh, VSD in some cases. And this is another hot specimen with similar uh, setting that corrected TJ with VSD. But no, no, no. Uh, the pulmonary uh, trunk is big enough to have uh, uh, left, uh, right side, right posterior pulmonary valve is is no, almost normal size or even bigger than normal size. So this is right side uh, left ventricle with uh, uh, sub sub valvular VSD on the on the right. On the left side, we can see uh, my tri uh, left side the tricuspid valve with right ventricle and subarterial in fundibulum. In in fact, this is a, a kind of a subarterial type of VSD, uh, where the aortic valve and pulmonic valve are in the same level, and this is VSD. Another is a, a post-operative specimen. Although we could not save this baby, but it, it, it was uh, uh, 20 years ago uh, where, when the, the patient was operated for double switch operation. So there was a uh, VSD under, under, uh, in here, and this, uh, so VSD is patch closed, and uh, arterial switch operation at the, at the his pulmonary valve is at, uh, rep displaced anteriorly uh, so, so such that uh, left side right, ven uh, right ventricle a uh, pulmonary connection uh, through the switch uh, nail or pulmonary artery and aorta is uh, in the posterior. At, at the atrial level, we have a uh, atrial switch operation uh, so that uh, systemic venous blood goes to uh, left, left side right ventricle and uh, so, um, Systemic uh, uh, pulmonary venous blood from to the uh, right right side mitral valve to left ventricle. So there are uh, the, the variation of uh, morphology in terms of uh, development of pulmonary valve and uh, v VSD, the type of VSD, and and there is uh, and these are the major determinant of uh, diagnostic and uh, surgical. Uh, op options of corrective transposition. Maybe I'm sure you have many questions, but uh, we will discuss uh, uh, later on, and I think we'll enjoy the uh, cases. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. So. The wonderful introduction of the uh, correct PJ anatomy. Okay, we have uh, not enough time, so now I move on to the next speaker. Omagala, oh are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Dr. Omagala oh will talk about the uh, natural history and the age guideline of corrected TGA briefly. Thank you. Omar? Omagala. Oh anyway, can you see the 
assessment clearly, Omar? Are you uploading? Yeah, we are now uploading. So the okay. is way. And I, I would like to ask you how about the image video system? You upload your file, Omar? To, to win some time, I uh, first like to thank you very much to including me in uh, your beautiful uh, sessions. I, I'm not sure whether you hear me quite well because uh, I hear some echo. I can hear you very well, clearly. Okay. But, uh, Good. But we still cannot see your file. Yeah. Your file is on your comp on your screen, right? It's not yet on my screen, but I can uh, can upload it again. What do you think? Uh, you are I now... should can share. Should I? Yeah, yeah. You can start. Uh, But we still cannot see your file. Wait a second. Actually, we have tried test both before. At that time, oh, this it one. Was, it was successful. Share. Share, okay. It's coming. Wait. While your files are unloading, I would like to ask you if the the Sizoka team, Dr. Song team, can you hear me? I'm uploading this now again. All right. Dr. Song Kim. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Me when you see my screen, please. Okay. Kim Sohae is on the line. Oh. 안녕하십니까, Soho 선생님. Oh, so the, uh. your team using one computer or the each doctor use the each? Actually, we are using one computer. Oh, great. Each... Great, great. Me, Dr. Sato. Oh. Dr. Chen, Dr. Sato. <laughs> and apart from Sizoka, two Sizoka team oh. member. Oh. Okay. And. Uh, is included. So, total in total seven seven people seven from Shizuoka. Great. Thank you for your active participation. Sure. So, Omar, well, are you, you ready? I'm ready, but do you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it's too small. So. Yeah, I'll do it bigger now. Wait a sec. Here. Okay. Yes. Great. That's sure. Now it's good. Yeah, it's great. You can start. So tell me when to start. I don't hear you well. We can hear you very well. Don't worry. OK. Good. Uh, thank you very much for including me. I'll try to, hold, to stick to my time uh, about uh, less than 10 minutes. Historical uh, the transposition described 1875. About 50, in the 50s, uh, Lillehei is the first surgery transposition, and then double switch suggested by Ilbao in 1990. Incidence is a very rare uh, disease. About 0.5% of all congenital heart disease, and there is male predominance. Uh, this study depicts the risk factors from early death, which are related to preoperative heart failure, 
impaired right ventricular function, which is a systemic ventricular heart block, and a younger age at surgery. Not only that, patients with more than mild preoperative tricuspid valve regurgitation whose valves were not replaced did very poorly after surgery. Hence, the recommendation was patients with heart failure should be repaired early before systemic right ventricular dilates. Interestingly, they found out that patients with cyanosis, they can wait for intracardiac repair until uh, getting symptomatic, and they do tolerate it well. This study focusing more on adult genital heart disease, corrected transposition may remain undiagnosed until adult life. Symptoms rarely occur before fourth or fifth decades. In our case, our oldest patient was 72 years old and came to us because of bradycardia. And then we found his diagnosis and complete heart block. Symptoms of adults will include uh, rhythm, rhythm disturbance, left AV valve regurgitation, impaired systemic ventricle, and congestive heart failure. Outcome of 121 patients with congenitally corrected transposition collected over 47 years, showed, which showed how rare it is, that about 20% uh, will be asymptomatic while the rest uh, either congestive heart failure or would show cyanosis. This is here the survival curve in these patients. So you see reaching the fifth decade is rare, rarely. Uh, here comparing no TR versus significant TR, this is no TR versus significant TR, big difference. Even more difference between normal RV function, which is this one, versus abnormal RV function. Very uh, big difference in prognosis. And the risk factor for poor outcome, again, and this is very important, significant TR and poor RV function remain throughout literature, worst risk factor for outcome. This is interesting, uh, I found it for myself also, that conventional high ventricular repair like corrected transposition with large VSD and we just close the VSD, they will have higher risk for deterioration of TR and the RV function compared to just palliation or unoperated patients. But remember, we are talking here about very small amount of number of patients. But at that time, they said double switch might be a better option. This uh, study looked at sudden death in this category of patients, and they said they, even with reasonable functional class and ventricular function, they can uh, drop that. So in follow-up, we should definitely have a Holter monitor ECG follow-up. Now, the guidelines for uh, corrected transposition, I actually will tell you more about uh, the Indian guidelines, consensus statement, as I found it more related to our uh, children. And uh, interestingly, you see associated lesions is quite common, but also association with VSD and abnormal tricuspid valve. This one was found more common in pathology specimens. Now, age of presentation is variable, and associated anomalies affect natural history. Approximately 10% are born with congenital heart, uh, congenital heart block, and the risk of developing congenital heart, uh, co uh, sorry, complete heart block is 2% per year, while in adulthood, uh, about 30% will have developed a complete heart block. Interestingly also, that the function of right ventricle might deteriorate after the second decade, even without associated anomaly. It's very important also to know this when we have follow-up on these patients. 
Now here are some uh, figures about how uh, timing of intervention. So as I mentioned before, if we have no associated anomalies, usually medical follow-up is okay. Uh, neonatal double switch may be considered, but I guess most centers will not do this in a healthy looking child. Now, if a corrected transposition is associated with a large VSD, patient shows up at the age of six months. In this case, double switch might be indicated provided the patient doesn't have irreversible pulmonary vascular disease. While if the patient showed up at the age between three to six months, pulmonary artery banding followed by double switch or even direct double switch operation depending on institutional policy. This means, uh, is your surgeon ready to do that? Is your ICU and the rest of the team ready to go ahead with double switch? Now, if we have associated corrected transposition with large VSD and pulmonary systems, like hemodynamic of tetralogy of Fallot, in the case the VSD is rootable, so double switch plus Rastelli might be indicated, but if the surgeon is not happy with it, also univentricular tract might be the right thing to do. If the VSD is not rootable, saturation is good. In this case, probably it's better to wait and see and have a good discussion with the parents. While if the saturation goes low, let's say less than 70% uh, at all times, probably univentricular repair pathway is indicated. The guidelines for corrected transposition in adult is more oriented towards adult congenital, published in Circulation 2019. And here, just I'm sharing with you a few things they wanted, they, they looked at. Here, recommendation for uh, the corrected transposition. Um, often, the echo is not good enough for diagnosis uh, RV function, so MRI is good. And of course, tricuspid valve replacement is indicated if we have severe TR and impaired RV function. They looked here also at delivery of care and they looked at routine follow-up, what they recommend to be checked. As I mentioned before, Holter monitor, uh, MRI, pulse oximetry is all uh, important and follow-up. Now, management options for correct position, we know that indication for intervention, not all patients need intervention, but if you have a large VSD, large VSD severe PS, when important left-sided TR coexists, complete heart block, you have to intervene. Possibly uh, doing, uh, going the uh, single ventricle tract, when you have associated other lesions, for example, the LV is too small, uh, present stratum tricuspid valve, AVSD, significant TR can also be an indication to go the single ventricle track. I look very well, two more minutes to go. Uh, this study checking the classical repair, which is, if you want, the hemodynamic repair. You have a large VSD, you close it, and uh, that's it. So they looked at 52 patients uh, over 20 years. Classic complete repair is not satisfactory. Why? High cooperative mortality, high rate of complete AV block, frequent secondary heart failure. So and this study is, a, is an editorial actually in 2018. They're discussing option of single track for corrected transposition. And they said because rarity of this disease, the available surgical option cannot compare with the biventricular repair itself. Optimal surgery for corrected transposition remains uncertain. And obviously, multi-center study might help improve current practice. Now, if uh, I have some time, say, oh, I can do a case presentation. You tell me, please. Uh, yeah. How, how long does it take uh, for several minutes? 
Okay, go ahead. You can introduce okay. your case. Yeah. So this is, uh, I, I'm presenting this here, I think like typical uh, case, uh, came to us at the age of two months in December 2011, actually asymptomatic, while the, the, the parents noticed some mild uh, diagnosis. I'm just showing you the, the echo. And does it work? Okay, now it works. Because the fourth chamber will show clearly this is the right ventricle and this is the tricuspid valve. And here in uh, like five chamber view, you see, see this is a doubly committed BSD hoping to the aorta and this is the pulmonary artery. Now, uh, there is pulmonary stenosis as we see by increase in the velocity, and this is of course the left ventricle. Now, this patient, a few years later at the age of three years when the child's saturation started to drop, had the following scenario, right bidirectional gland, atrial septectomy, pulmonary artery banding, and also permanent pacemaker. Uh, this uh, study, echo study done after one year from surgery. Surgery went quite well, went on. But as you notice here, first of all, this is here, the gland, quite patent, and but unfortunately here you see this is the left ventricle and probably the banding and the stenosis cause dilatation and impairment. This is here the large ASD and this is the right ventricle which looks quite good. This is a short, sort of short axis view showing uh, the velocity across the banding and this is the gradient which is above uh, let's say 70 millimeter mercury. Now, uh, suggested further management was the following. We saw he came last time, 2012, by phone. We know that the patient is still doing fine. Of course, because of corona, uh, that the management now is more by phone than direct uh, clinical approach. Now we are awaiting improvement of uh, LV uh, function and otherwise continue conservative management and to see what to offer next to this patient. Thank you very much. Thank you, Omagala. Uh, thank you for your nice introduction of the natural history and the guideline of CCTGA. Actually, as you told us, uh, it's a history, right? So today we can make a new strategy for CCTJ treatment options. So before we start our case presentation, I would like to call on our panelists. I would like to introduce you one by one. So the, please turn on video of the, uh, the, of the panel. The first, ready? Chang Ali. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm uh, Chang Ali. Uh, uh, I'm Chang Ali, uh, Sejong General Hospital Cardiac Surgeons. Uh, nice to meet you, uh, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Next, Sat Singo Kasara from Okayama. Are you joining now, Singo? I cannot hear. Okay, uh, then uh, Shizuoka team. Dr. Song Kim. Can you hear me? And we. Okay. Please Have introduce you your team one by one. Please turn. Uh, you. <laughs> and I'm with. Ah, yeah. And here, Dr. Sakamoto. Sakamoto. We need a bigger team. team. Shizuoka team. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but we can see you, but uh, too small screen. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, right. you should you should open up uh, our video. 
in your screen? Uh, Maybe. Because uh, your screen, your camera is in on the, the, the main screen, so please change the, uh, the, the pin. Okay. Okay. One, please uh, turn off your right. video. Then we can control. Okay. Yes. Turn off your video. Then we can make bigger screen. No, I don't understand. Stop the sharing. Okay. Okay. Put off your video or what? Uh, sharing option. Ah, ah, wait a sec. Yeah, yeah, sharing option. This is yeah. stop my video. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is stopped. This is on. Uh. Now I'm shared my video. Okay. Yeah. Can we make a uh, Shizuoka cartoon bigger? Yeah, bigger screen. Yes. I'm fine. <laughs> okay, anyway, we can see you a little bit bigger. Do you see me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can see you. The, uh, Shingo is now joining. So, Shingo, how are you? I'm fine. Ah, Shingo, Shingo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we cannot hear you well. Shingo. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't hear you also well. <laughs> That's why I don't. <laughs> I can talk. Do you hear me well? Yeah. Okay. I, can I you hear me? No, no. Oh, yeah. Yes. I can hear you well. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Is it okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Should okay? I present myself okay. now? No. Okay, next uh, I would like to introduce the Dr. Satoshi Yasukochi. Hi, I'm yeah. Satoshi Yasukochi from Nagano Children's. I think it's uh, thank you very much for invitation to me uh, to, ah. to your uh, wonderful meetings. Oh, thank so, you. Okay. Where are the, the other doctors from Nagano? They yeah, they participate with uh, in person. I think that they're using their uh, own computers. Oh, I see. I can see the Orkan. Orkan, how are you? Hi, <laughs> Oh, good. good. Good evening. Good to see you. And we have uh, Dr. Kanjel uh, Lakotako and also our fellow here wow. in the room. Yeah, <laughs> so we are watching welcome, and learning from all of you guys. Thanks for, thanks for uh, invite, in, inviting us. Okay, now then we can start. I would like to call on our first speaker, Dr. Sujin Park. She will, she was, she is supposed to present two cases, but I think time, we should consider the time. So the, okay, anyway, we can start. Dr. Park. Seong Ho. Oh? Your, your mic is not loud enough. I barely hear what you say. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I will speak up. Hope you are keeping safe in this horrific time of the pandemic. I'm, re I'm just really glad that we have the opportunity to, to huh? Just a moment. Hello, the, can you hear the Dr. Park's presentation? Anybody? Yeah, please? but very soft voice. Soft voice. Yeah, maybe yeah, please but please a little bit more microphone uh, for Dr. Park would be great. Can volume you up? hear me well? Yeah, volume up, please. Uh, yeah, okay. I okay, right now? Volume up, please. Okay, so I'm going to start again. Good morning, good afternoon, yeah. good evening. Better, thank you. Okay. okay. Hope you're keeping safe in this horrific time of the pandemic. I'm just really glad that we have the opportunity to communicate in this matter. 
I will briefly review some of the key articles published on the topic of CCTGA and present two of our interesting cases for discussion. So um, in this is the natural history of isolated CCTGA. And in 95, there was a publication showing the natural history uh, natural history. As you can see in the chart, the incidences of complication is pretty minor until the first three to four decades of life, but dramatically increases thereafter, uh, necessitating close follow-up by a cardiologist to recognize the frequent complications, such as congestive heart failure, LV dysfunction, heart block, and arrhythmia. In the year 2000, there was a publication that showed the long-term natural outcome of all CCTGAs. And it shows that 60% of the patient had symptomatic congestive heart failure by the age of 45 in group one, who are uh, CCTGA with associate regions. And 25% in group two isolated CCTGA. Uh -huh. And 56% of group one had severe RV dysfunction by the age of 45 and 32% in group two. This is where the debate can be made interpreting the data. Some may say nearly half the people live without any problem until middle age, but most think that these data clearly indicates the increasing incidences of systemic ventricular dysfunction and clinical congestive heart failure with increasing age in patients most productive middle years. So even in patients with isolated CCTGA, uh, by the fifth decade, more than one-third developed heart failure symptoms. So in this article, concluded that although some patients do extremely well beyond the age 60, it is an exception rather than the rule. And they say that um, earlier surgical management of these patients before ventricular dysfunction becomes prominent should be incorporated into management in an attempt to improve long-term outcomes. So um, this is the outcome of physiological correction, uh, such as closing the VSD, relieving the PS, or fixing the valves, but these showed poor outcomes. And there's another uh, that shows physiological correction, and these have poor outcomes also. And then there is the anatomical repair. Anatomical repair has two issues. First, where the morphological LV is trained since birth due to large VSD, PS or etc., and those who need training. In other words, when the per when is the perfect timing for PA banding? And secondly, uh, when should we perform the double switch operation after LV training? So in an article, it goes um, in an article it goes as far to say that even PA banding alone can be beneficial in the long run, rather than to do nothing in these patients, because. PA banding slows the progression of the systemic AV valve regurgitation and systemic RV dysfunction, thus delaying, delaying the morbidity and mortality of these patients. So the issues that we need to have in mind with PA banding is the retraining of the morphologic LV, improvement or stabilization of the tricuspid valve, aortic valve, and morphologic RV and morphologic LV function. However, the morphologic LV loses potential for a successful training as the patient ages, although the threshold at which morphologic LV cardiomyocyte adap adaptation from hyperplasia to hypertrophy disappears is not well defined yet. In, the, um, in this paraspaced group, they performed neonatal banding because they hypothesized that early banding would preserve the morphologic LV rather than retraining. So their results show that PA banding is safe and carries low morbidity to in neonates with isolated CCTGA, and at midterm, the tricuspid valve function is stabilized or improved, and systemic competence of the LV was maintained, thus allowing the double switch if indicated. So when should double switch be performed? So in some institutes, they prefer uh, neonatal K banding with successful ra uh, success rate high. And in this article, uh, studied the effect of age and PA banding and duration of LV training on LV function and the presence of AR. And they said that um, younger age, uh, age younger than two years at banding and anatomic repair at age younger than three years 
uh, was associated with favorable long-term outcomes, and anatomical repair was seldom feasible in uh, patients older than 15. So this article shows the factors related to LV dysfunction after anatomical repair. There was an association with late onset LV dysfunction, an older age, and higher weight at repair, and severe neo uh, neoaortic regurgitation and pacemaker in implantation. Uh, so early anatomic repair, aggressive management of neo-AR, and CRT could prevent the development of late LV dysfunction. So this is another topic important in CCTGA, and it is the improvement of morphological uh, tricuspid valve repair after the anatomic repair. The theory is that restoring the morphologic RV to the low pressure pulmonary circulation has been shown to markedly reduce the TR just by virtue of mechanical unloading uh, and septal shift with restoration of the morphologic LV to the systemic circulation. Uh, the Boston group said that TR improved significantly after anatomic repair, even without tricuspid valvuloplasty. So here's an article from Germany by, uh, by Dr. Horaska, and he wrote a lot of papers on the corrected, uh, congenitally corrected TGA. Uh, and he said that the anatomical correction provides encouraging survival and fu functional benefits since 93% showed pr preservation of the morphologic LV function in 15 years of follow-up. So this is my conclusion. And so between the conventional and anatomical, I would prefer the anatomical repair if possible, especially in those patients with isolated CCTGA who can uh, do the true uh, double switch operation compared to the Rascali type um, double switch operation. And the timing of banding, I would prefer it uh, as soon as the TR develops and before the age of two. And timing of uh, double switch is better before three years of age. So this is our case, first case. Uh, this is male, born in 2014, no birth history. Fetal diagnosis was CCTG8 at another hospital. This is our uh, initial echo at two months, right-sided morphologic uh, LV, left-sided morphologic RV, and mild function in MR, grade one, and two, uh, one to two, and mild function of TR, grade one. And the PA was rising, arising from the morphologic LV, aorta from the morphologic RV with mild aortic regurgitation, and fair-sized PBA with pressure of 70 millimeter mercury. And two months later, functional MR has increased to mild to moderate, and the PDA has not closed, and it seems to have increased in size. So uh, this is my first question to the voters. An isolated CCTGA with aggravating TR, moderate PDA, what is your choice of treatment? I'll give you multiple choices. First, percutaneous PDA closure two, pulmonary artery banding and ductal ligation, three, double switch operation, four, more observation. So just, just. Just me voting now. <laughs> oh, should we say something or? Oh, uh, should we suppose to vote or should we suppose to yes, Omar, say, say something? Okay, I'll. You visit the site www.menti. Ah, we have to vote. Yeah. With your uh, the, the, the cell phone. But I don't know how to work it. Do you want more? Okay. Okay. Uh, 
If you do not prepare, please visit www.menci.com. Then uh, there is a screen. You need uh, uh, here, put yeah. a, some uh, code number. I cannot okay. see the screen. I don't. Eight, two, two. Okay, this is the first time. So the voting result. Okay. Show us. Okay. Number two is the most 11. Formulatory banding and the doctor ligation. We can discuss more later. So the please keep on your presentation. So um, we I went like ahead this. with number one, for teaching CBA closure, because we have excellent uh, interventional lists. So this is, oh, oops, sorry. So uh, we performed uh, PDA occlusion with um, ADO, eight, eight times six millimeters, at the age of seven months. And you can see that the PA to AO, uh, aortic pressure in, uh, from, decreased from 0 0.74 to 0 0.5. And the QPQS before the closure was 1.5. And this is the follow-up echo uh, three months later. Uh, we expected uh, to decrease the uh, morphologic MR, but three months later, the functional, uh, I mean, functional MR. Three months later, the functional MR has aggravated with LV uh, dilatation. So I will pass on to the panel discussion. Okay, you can explain us how it was. <laughs> Actually, at that time, we thought the PDA makes the volume overload to the right ventricle and make the PR aggravated. But after we close the PDA, the PR yeah. aggravated. Mm -hmm. What's the mechanism? So, uh, do you want me to explain? <laughs> so, uh, I maybe, maybe because of the PA pressure, it fell, so, and the LV, I mean, the morphologic uh, RV, the con configuration of the RV shifted. I, I thought one of the reasons might be that, or we were a little bit too late at closing the PDA. Um, I don't really know the exact mechanism, but, um, should I ask the panel? <laughs> or, um. Okay, Chang Ali explain. Uh, uh, can uh, can you uh, hear me? Okay. Uh, uh, can, you, can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. So actually, these patients, uh, uh, we did uh, uh, only PDA uh, uh, closure. Uh, so uh, many uh, uh, doctors uh, support uh, uh, second options. Uh, that means the PA bending or uh, PDA like together. So actually, uh, uh, I, th I, I now we uh, I, I think uh, it's a uh, better options in uh, second uh, choice, but at that time we did the only PD uh, closer. So actually, I want to ask uh, Shingo, how about this uh, case? If you if you're the patients, how do you do? Yeah, Omar. Say something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Omar, 
Omar? Yeah. Omar. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. You can okay. express your... Okay. Like, I would still, if I have a case like this, I would still have closed, I would still would have closed the PDA first. Okay. The, the fact that the, the, the R increased uh, is very difficult to understand, but uh, we did uh, studies on large PDA, especially large PDA. I think this one was very large also, that uh, when you close the PDA, the LV function deteriorates in normal heart, and it takes some months to recover. So I believe what happened here is similar, because the afterload suddenly increased. Before, when you have the PDA, the PDA is a vent, for, so the afterload remains low. And now suddenly the afterload increase affects the right ventricle. The right ventricle gets impaired, possibly this TR. And I think if we would have waited three, four months, he would have recovered with the help of captopril, possibly. Okay. Shingo. We actually, we will talk about the permanent bending in case two, but how about in these patients? PDA closure is the right decision or a bad decision? I think that, uh, yes, and uh, pulmonary, uh, PDA is closed first and then to that uh, pulmonary artery bending. But uh, I'm not sure to that the properly, uh, I cannot hear that, uh, see that uh, slide. So that the, what happened to that uh, uh, tricuspid regurgitation after the PDA closure? I'm not sure. Uh, even though the volume loading to the right ventricle is decreased, as you can see, the LV pressure is also decreased. So I think the septal configuration changes after PDA closure. So the Sorry. septum is moved to the right side and then move uh, to the right side, then to yeah, the yeah. Okay, pull, sure. pull the septal cordae, sure. and uh, it aggravated the TR, I think. Okay. So. Anyway, that's that uh, good timing to the pulmonary artery bonding anyway. Yeah, yeah. So I think the at this time, we think uh, sure. yes. the, the PDA, band, uh, PDA closure and the pulmonary bending is the, the best pulmonary. choice for this patient. Okay. But uh, I just uh, I just asked the question is after the uh, pulmonary artery uh, PDA closure, uh -huh. any uh, QRS uh, ECG the QRS is uh, very big and why? So a ventricular ventricular interaction sometimes to that uh, mm -hmm. uh, need to the CRP, but in the patient is not so necessary to that uh, uh, CRP or anyway at that in this time. Yeah, I, I cannot remember the QRS duration after PDA closure, but the main mechanism for aggravating TR is the decreasing LV pressure. Sure, just a shifting to that uh, yeah. interventricular septum. Okay, sure. Okay, okay. do more. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Uh, he's back. So um, I think there was some uh, complications. Uh, the PDA was closed at seven months, and this is the echo uh, after three months. And as you can see, the TR has increased because you can see the septal configuration has shifted. And um, these are some of the uh, reasons why uh, TR, uh, there is aggravated TR. And uh, so we decided to uh, perform a PA banding at 10 months after uh, seeing that the TR has increased. And this was uh, after, the, after the banding. Function looks good and mild functional MR and slightly hypoplastic LV. And the banding site looks good with pressure over of over 50 millimeter mercury, and all heart failure medication was stopped. And this is at 31 months. The ventricular function looks good, and functional MR was uh, mild. 
and the banding site looks tight with pressure gradient of 70 millimeter mercury. And at age three, we decided to proceed with the double switch operation and performed imaging studies. And on MRI, uh, morphologic LV was slightly hypoplastic compared to the morphologic RV with good both ventricular function. And CT, no significant an, uh, abnormalities. And on echo, the ventricular function was good with mild septal bouncing. Uh, functional MR was mild. And the banding site was even tighter than before with pressure gradient almost reaching 90 millimeter mercury. And on TAF, the gradient at the banding site was 83, and the ventricular and diastolic pressures were 10 millimeter mercury. So uh, at the age of three, second operation was performed. Uh, double switch operation with our um, atrial switch operation and arterial switch operation and PDA division and PA debanding. And this is the interoperative echo. The ventricular function looks good and the morphologic TR has regressed. And uh, no sending pathway obstruction was noticed. And this is the post-op CT. The both PAs looked unobstructed, no pulmonary vein drainage site obstruction was noted. And this is the latest echo. Uh, the, one hi uh, the hypoplastic LV looks good, no pulmonary vein obstruction, and both AV valves only have mild regurgitation, and no uh, neoaortic regurgitation or PS uh, is noted. So, um, So to the panel, uh, an isolated CCTJ with mild TR, what is your choice of treatment? So the, okay. <laughs> no? uh, no? I would like to ask to Dr. Shingo, actually we have not enough time so that I, I will skip case two. In case two, Dr. Shingo will uh, tell us about the permanent bending. So the Shingo, do you have any idea Thank about you very much. the isolated TJ with the TR? Mm -hmm. After then, you can talk about the, uh, your assigned issue about the permanent bending. Uh, how tight, okay. optimal okay. timing, and sure. duration of a Permanent bending and the limit of the age of permanent bending, etc. Shingo? Sure. Okay, can you hear me? And uh, thank you very much for that, uh, uh, giving me uh, a good opportunity uh, just to uh, talk about that. So uh, I think that uh, uh, pulmonary artery banding, we cannot do that the neonatal period. Because of that the neonatal period, sometimes too difficult to the banding, and also uh, how tight is a very difficult situation. Usually, to that band after that uh, uh, left ventricle, the severe dysfunction, you know, immediately after the 24 hours. So uh, I just recommended that two uh, uh, pulmonary artery banding. The best timing is the two or three months, or uh, within uh, six months, and the waiting to that the two, then to that the double switch procedures. So a uh, neonatal period, and also an early phase of that. Uh, uh, infant and uh, atrial switch and the thinning procedure is a very difficult situation about that. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, some uh, surgeon do that uh, master operation, but I not used to that uh, master operation. The thinning operation is much better. Uh, I believe that. So uh, I think that uh, two or three years are waiting to the, uh, after the banding and then to that the double switch procedures. So uh, immediate. In that the beginning of that uh, uh, pulmonary artery meeting, how tight? Usually to that 80% uh, uh, of the blood pressure is the left ventricles. And then to that waiting to that one year and the same uh, blood pressures, and then waiting the one more year, uh, probably uh, 1.2 times to that the left ventricles pressure high. That uh, uh, left ventricle is uh, good enough to uh, training. So uh, usually to the uh, two or three months, within the six months, do that pulmonary artery banding, and then to the uh, check to the blood pressure. Sometimes to the trusler uh, formula, we just put in a banding size, decided.
but a very difficult situation. Uh, putting uh, uh, blood pressure is uh, around to that 80 percent that are respect to good pressures, and then to that the waiting to that two or three years, uh, finally to that the uh, double C procedures. But uh, even our experience to that from that uh, send the patient from the any another hospitals. And uh, most of that uh, uh, older age, the pulmonary artery band is uh, 10 years old. So uh, 10 years old the patient is coming. We try to the pulmonary artery banding and it's a first. And then uh, cannot do that uh, enough blood pressures. And then two times or three times and do that pulmonary artery banding, redo procedures. And then waiting to that uh, three hours and successful uh, uh, double stitch procedure, but that patient do that uh, left ventricle is good, but uh, uh, interventricular septum is unwell. So uh, uh, we put on a CRT and the pacemakers, and much better on the left ventricle performance. Mm -hmm. So I think that the older age sometimes do uh, uh, AV valve or uh, interventricular uh, conduction is not good. So uh, I think that uh, elder age is very difficult situation about the left ventricle training. Yeah, for my bending is a simple procedure, but it's very difficult. I can. You. Can you can you hear me? Okay, for my bending no. is a simple procedure, but the uh, timing of pulmonary bending and the duration of pulmonary bending, upper limit of bending, etc., is very difficult. So yeah, exactly. your opinion is uh, uh, two, three, two to three months old is optimal timing for pulmonary bending, right? Yeah. Two to three months, yes. Yeah. And uh, the duration, of, duration of bending is uh, at least uh, two years? Two years. Okay. Any uh, other opinion? Uh, from can you? Okay. And can I ask a Omar, question? Omar. Yeah, you oh. can. Yeah, my question is, you know, the the late presenter of uh, the normal TGA. Usually when we do the banding, we, the, the surgeon developed some guidelines, when to go ahead for the switch repair, and it has something to do with the LV mass. And my question is, do we have also something similar for the corrected transposition before the double switch, whether we have to measure a certain um, the, like mass of the left ventricle before knowing it's doable. Yeah, it's a good point. LV mass is a good indication for LV training. Uh, the first one, uh, when is the optimal timing of pulmonary bending in a large VSD or aggravating TR case? to prevent, to reduce the TR, or to reduce the shunt amount, the permanent bending, the shingles opinion is two to three months. How about Changali? Actually, actually, I had, uh, I haven't had uh, non, uh, many patients. Uh, uh, I did uh, double switch operation in uh, at the age of the Uh, about 40 days, but at that time it's uh, very difficult to do the uh, double switch operation as a uh, single set. Mm -hmm. So actually, I, d I, I agree. Uh, initially bending uh, at uh, about uh, two or three months, and then wait, and then we did a uh, double switch operation maybe, yeah. So I just ask you to that, uh, uh, Chang, -ha. Chang -ha. Why don't do that the neonatal period? Do that the pulmonary actually, uh, the patient non neonatal about uh, four yes. years. Uh, actually, I wait. wait what the reason? Yeah. What the reason of that? The no. Yeah, yeah. But the patient has uh, some okay. uh, symptoms, heart uh, symptoms. Uh, but we uh, we have two cho two options. One is the uh, bending, or uh, uh, one is the double switch operations, right? But at that time, uh, I tried to do the uh, double switch operations. But, but the purpose different. of that the left ventricle training, it means that the early phase is much better. Don't you think? But uh, I'm a surgeon, 
So mm -hmm. that the double stitch procedure, sometimes to the pulmonary artery size is much dilated. So a switch is very difficult situation, even a neonate. Yeah. That reason why I don't do that the neonate appear is put on a bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other opinion from other panels? Oh, okay. And then. Uh, can we? Uh, from Shizuka. Okay. Yeah, so. so I'm Sakamoto. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, so. Uh, almost completely agree with the uh, Shingo and the Chaha. And the banding timing. Timing of banding. Uh, so I like, I'd like to make uh, the banding during the infantile period, not so early. Maybe so six months or less than one year, it's okay. And yeah, yeah, yeah. so, and I do make a banding a little bit looser, lo looser. And waiting time one year or 1.5 year, at the time, one, point, one year later, the banding is reasonable size. It's will be reasonable size. It's perfect, <laughs> I think. And uh, I have one question uh, to Shingo. And you were uh, comment, you had the comment about the timing to make her to, to move the oh, average operation from the banding at the systemic pressure of, uh, so same pressure of the light ventricular arrangement or 1.2 times of light ventricular pressure. So, and uh, our experience, a uh, very small experience, but too much wrong, uh, too much longer time, waiting time, can make her uh, some so bad, so uh, affective, uh, affection, uh, affective uh, influence, uh, influence to the left ventricular function. Too much waiting time. So, so we are uh, discussing. Uh, so, uh, so now. So just 100, together with the reasonable mass is the best timing to make a WCH operation or not? Not too much longer waiting. So do you have any comment about the longer waiting time after more than 1.0 pressure of light ventricle? OK, Dr. Shingo. You are now, uh, okay. mic is now. <laughs> Your microphone is off. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just uh, waiting to that. Uh, uh, just the left ventricle pressure is the same uh, light ventricle pressure, but uh, waiting to that uh, more long, long time. The you said to that the left ventricle performance is not good. So I just uh, waiting to that uh, uh, two years. It means to that allowing to that the same pressure, left ventricle to the right ventricles. The more waiting to that uh, uh, one, one month or two months on the within uh, six months, but the uh, same pressures. 1.2 is a very rare situation about that. So mm -hmm. I think it's better to that uh, waiting uh, to that uh, reach the same left ventricle, right ventricle pressure. That's a good time. That's uh, uh, strategies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So among your patients, you try the only uh, permanent bending once, or sometimes you try tightening of the permanent bending more. Is the how about your experience? Mm -hmm. oh, I A small. Small baby, the six within the six months, just one time is okay. But uh, older ages, uh, I I just presented uh, the ten years or something, mm -hmm. and then to the, the two or three times. Bruce banding is first. Bruce banding is first. Then two or three times to that the banding. He do again. Okay, Omar. Omar, you can comment briefly. Very short. 
where I don't think we can do uh, guidelines for everybody because the disease is very rare. So not every surgeon has the same experience. And hence, in our, in our experience, we discuss with the surgeon and we don't push for double switch so early because how many do they do per year? Mm -hmm. Two maximum, so the experience is not vast. So what we would do is if the patient has intact ventricular septum and nothing else, no TR, we just wait a few months. And I agree with the colleague that at some stage, like uh, six months or slightly later, we do the band and then wait for the double switch. But if we have a large ESD, we don't know, need a band. It's like similar to the TDA because we have the same pressure in the left and right ventricle. Hence, we can go six months with large VSD and do the double switch immediately without banding. Okay. The next issue is for a double switch operation. Atrial switch op operation is a big issue because um, most surgeons experience the arterial switch a lot, but the uh, atrial switch experience is a little bit less. Exactly. So the, yeah. I would like to call on our next panelist, Dr. Sanada and the Chen from Shizuoka. You can tell us about the uh, atrial switch operation. Okay, this is Kim song -hye. And Sanada and Chen is my fellows. Uh -huh. And we are going to talk about uh, not only the atrial switch operation, but also they uh, uh, mentioned about the indication of hemi. Hemi and, uh, mm. and the outcome of the hemi double switch series because of very rare and uh, specific situations. So please uh, allow to share screen on the computer and speak to the Sanada first. Uh, the token is not ours, so please give us a token. Please give us a ball to uh, Professor Kasahara to Shizu. Okay, here, here we go. And uh, can you hear me? It's good. Here. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. This moment. And here you go. Can you see the screen well, everybody? No, not yet. Thank you. Not yet. So, we cannot see the your file. File? OK. We're going to share screen. Please check the Shizuoka screen. Can you, can you see this? No. Can you see our slide? No, not yet. Can you try once more? Okay. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can see you and uh, okay. hear you well. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. No. I'm Kazuya Sanada, Shizuoka team. I'm speaking from Hiroshima, Japan. I'm afraid my comment is slightly different from this discussion point, but we will explain about hemi double switch operation, and we are best. First, I'd like to talk about indications for one and a half repair, so-called hemi double switch operation in our institute. This flowchart you can see, patients with good morphological left ventricle function. Uh, for example, 
LV over uh, RV ratio greater than 60% after PA banding, myo mass index greater than 40 gram per square measured by MRI, and so on. And sufficient RV sites are considered indications for anatomical, anatomical repair. Then we, we confirmed that a morphological RV volume measured by MRI is greater than 80% of normal RV for just any candidate and greater than 120% of normal RV for last candidate. Look, please. Look, please. <laughs> um, <coughs> If there are no other anatomical issues, full double slit operation is indicated. On the other hand, patients with small RV or other anatomical issues are indications for hemi double slit operation. We will show you more details about that on the next slide. We have had seven cases of hemi double slit operation patients. Thank you. Okay, so any comments for uh, atrial switch method? Charlie has a uh, lot of uh, atrial switch operation experience. You usually use the sending yeah. method. Yeah. What's the difference? Uh, actually, I, I, I didn't hear you uh, correctly, but uh, I think uh, well, my preference is uh, for the atrial switch operation is the sending operation. Uh, recently, I uh, uh, tried to put uh, BCPS, uh, that means the hemi sending operations. And in some patients, uh, uh, we need a uh, uh, mustard operation. But anyway, my preference is the sending operation. How about the uh, other surgeons, uh, Shingoa? Who prefer the mustard to sending? Even in Shizuoka, we are making, among the seven cases, uh -huh. we sometimes do a so, hemi mustard operation. But so recently, we do, we did make a hemi sending operation using the native uh, uh, arterial wall and the interatrial wall. So sometimes, uh, depends on the timing and uh, depends on the time <laughs> and uh, experience. Maybe so heavy sending or sending operation is better to make uh, so double switch operation or heavy double switch operation for younger patients. Okay. I agree with all of the sizes. Okay, let's go. Any other opinion? Shingo, you agree? Uh, you, you. I cannot hear you, Shingo. Say again. No, no, I cannot okay. hear you. Okay. You, you can express hear? your opinion later. Okay, yeah, yeah. let's move on to the next case, case three. Oh, uh, no. It's a CORT-TJ VSD PS case. Dr. jong Yun Kim. Let us start. Let's start now. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm start with my presentation. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jung Yun Kim, a pediatric cardiologist at Chejung General Hospital. I will show you just one cases for CCTJ with BSD and PS. A six-month-old baby boy presented with sinuses during si crying. He referred to our hospital for further evaluation and proper management. Initial saturation was 70%. He was diagnosed with CCTJ with VSD combined severe PS by echo. As you can see, echo shows no significant morphology TR and morphology MR and relatively good both ventricle function. And also valva and supravalva PS with small pulmonary valve annulus. You can see um, infundibular area was not too bad. So what is your choice? Six months old patient with CCTJ with BSD and severe PS, no TR, no pulmonary hypertension, 
and moderate sinuses. This is I prepared the both, pro both. There is the options below. One, number one is observation more, and number two is try percutaneous pulmonary valvuloplasty. Number three is systemic tube pulmonary stent or BCPS. Number four is conventional repair. Number five is anatomic repair like DSO. So you can enter in METI comms and please choose your choice now. Okay, can you, you, uh, you can use your cellular phone and uh, Number one, observation. Number two, percutaneous, try percutaneous pulmonary valvuloplasty. Number three, petition or BCPS. No anatomical repair. Okay. So I'd like to ask the panels about your opinion about this patient. Six months old, TJ, VSDPS, okay. no TR. I think well balanced the case, is, but saturation is a uh, little bit decreasing from 85 to 75 percent. Okay. Are there any opinion about uh, yeah. this issue? Should I say something? Okay. Yeah. Very brief. I chose observation more. Okay. Why? Yeah. And the reason being followed is uh, has nothing to do with my age that I'm conservative. <laughs> uh, the issue is if uh, you 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 change too much, you lose the best situation the patient is on now. If you go for repair, you have 30% chance. You have a complete uh, bundle block. Okay. So of course you you want you don't want this at this age. So you think the seventy five yeah. percent saturation is good enough for? And seventy five, I think it's not so bad for me, mm -hmm. and, uh, and unless the patient is uh, suffering from it. Okay. Any other opinion? Uh, the from second, our the panel? second thing, oh. if saturation drops slightly. Mm will do a very conservative balloon dilatation okay to to keep the gradient slightly high okay any other opinion okay keep going <laughs> i have one opinion from shizoka okay thank you right. i usually avoid balloon valvoplasty okay. in some okay. cases because so, i have to have to preserve pulmonary valve if the patient had a smaller, get smaller VSD or sometimes that patient needs rather PKS anastomosis later rather than the VSD enlargement. If the patient needs um, DKS anastomosis later in their repair, the balloon is uh, not good for preserving the pulmonary valve function. So, as Dr. Omar mentioned before, even though we have to do balloon, but we have to do very conservatively. Conservatively. Yeah. Sometimes they make uh, AB block. So, can, okay, any other opinion? Can I make a comment? Uh -huh. And ask the condition of the, this patient. Uh, so, I would like to get the information about the light ventricular size because these patients are mild to moderate cyanosis, and this patient is a candidate, candidate for the last type procedure, maybe, or it's the primary bone size of reasonable, smaller, but reasonable. At the time, valve preservation is very important. However, smaller, if the patient has a smaller, unexpectedly smaller primary bar at the time, Right ventricular size is very important to make a reasonable rapid type operation. If the 
patient have smaller or less than normal right ventricle at the time, maybe we have to increase the primary blood flow to increase the ventricular size. So, so we need the more information to decide which way is better. Yeah? I completely agree. We have to take much attention to the LV size uh, yeah. if we wait, wait, wait in time during the cyanosis period. Okay. Okay, keep on. Okay. Even we know the, the risk, high risk is due to uh, PPV, but our center is very aggressive center. So PPV was performed. Um, we performed PPV with a seven, uh, we performed cardiac cath uh, at the age of six months. And hemodynamic study shows that more, no morphology, RBOT obstruction, and arterial saturation was 75%. As you can see, uh, there was severe PS with peak pressure gradient of 71 millimeter mercury. And we performed PPV with seven size balloon. It was relatively effective. So QPQS ratio increased from 0.4 to 0.8, and arterial saturation increased from 75 to 90% without any complication. So this is progression. The patient regularly visited, visited to our hospital to check up his condition. Um, from 2005 to two, uh, 2017, the patient maintained well-balanced status without definite sinuses. However, when he was 12 years old, saturation gradually decreased to about 85%. 80 to 85 percent. So we decided to follow the evaluation, included echo, MRI, and CT scan, cardiac cath for next treatment plan. So this is um, echo at the age of 12. Uh, echo shows that large VFD and no definite morphology TR and morphology MR, and good both ventricle function and balanced size both ventricle. But progression of severe PS with peak pressure gradient of 62 millimeter mercury. MRI data shows good both ventricle function with normal ventricle dimension, as you can see. And this is the CT scan. Uh, sizable both PA with the infundibular valve and supravalve stenosis and large VSD, balanced ventricle dimension, and with a hypertrophy and mesocardia, you can see, and usual pattern of uh, coronary artery. And second, cath cardiac cath was underwent at the age of 12 years. Arterial saturation was 85 and hemoglobin 17.89. Uh, so salt balba PS with peak pressure gradient of 55 millimeter mercury. And so uh, balba and supra balba pressure PS was peak pressure gradient was of 51 millimeter mercury. And total PS was peak pressure gradient of 106 millimeter mercury, very severe. So next question. What is your choice in 12-year-old patient with CCTJ with a VSD, PS, no TR, and progression of mild sinuses? It's also both systems. There is option below. Please selection of about your opinion. Uh, okay, but... Uh we have not enough time, so uh, I would like to skip okay, this skip. question. Okay. So please show us so the Sejong's trial. Yeah, well, our choice is, uh, was BCPS. BCPS was underwent at the age of 12 years. Uh, after operation, saturation increased from 85% to 94%. And CD scan. Now, uh, this is um, um, the patient has a mental problem and we have uh, some events during follow-up. So we, this is CT scan, is follow-up CT scan. And also uh, shows that large outlet VSD and also size of both ventricle, both PA and patent BCPS and severe pulmonary stenosis. Uh, recent echo shows that acceptable both ventricle function with mild, mild TR morphology TR, and 
could be CPS without stenosis and severe PS with a peak pressure gradient of 90 millimeter mercury. So in this case, the patient was underwent BCPS only, in which morphology LV is exposed to high pressure and trained due to the uncorrected VSD and severe PS with the currently gradually decreased saturation. So we wonder whether uh, it is better to do anatomic repair in the current status or do consider surgery when other symptoms occur, such as progression of sinuses or right ventricle heart failure or um, developed mitral uh, functional mitral MR or exercise intolerance occurred. So is this, this is uh, my, uh, our last question. So what is your choice 16, 16 years old patient with a CCTJ with VSD, PS, mild MR after BCP status, current state, uh, saturation was 85 to 90%. So this is um, the last question about this. How about your opinion in this situation? Okay, anatomical repair is the... So the, in case of a TJ, uh, correct TJ, VSD, PS mm -hmm. cases, cyanosis is the one issue. And if the cyanosis are aggravated, we can try balloon, Petition, BCPS, or anatomical repair. Most uh, centers do not like uh, physiological repair, classical repair. So the uh, I would like to call on the next panelist, uh, Dr. Ueda and uh, Song Ye Kim. You can talk about the uh, Rastelli type operation because we all experienced the disadvantage of the Rastelli operation, so now many centers try Nikaido or Embla, something like that. So can you tell us which one is better and uh, which one is your preferred surgery in Shizuoka? Okay, Shizuoka team again. Okay, please, please give us, give us uh, the, the, the token, please. We're going to share the, the slides. <coughs> so if we uh, touch on the rusted type procedure, we should, ha we should mention about the uh, aortic trans translocation issue. So Dr. Ueda Yui is going to present about the, our experience of translocation in Corrected trans corrected transposition of air red arteries. But in the phone cancer, I think. <laughs> okay, please, compared to the uh, we're gonna share the, our slides, but please give us the uh, the the please give us a ball. The ball or to share something. Well, While you are uploading, I would like to ask the panelists about the in well balanced CCTJ VSDPS saturation is around ninety percent. No TR, good post ventricular function. Yeah. Are you going to perform surgery or wait? Just the case. Okay, Sakamoto, what's your opinion? Sakamoto, <laughs> we can see you. Me? You? Yeah. yeah. Hey, no. <laughs> very sorry, very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, so previous case of, of the uh, Sejong Hospital. So maybe, so I, I, I will do make uh, so hemi, hemi, hemi double switch operation because the severe pulmonary stenosis and the BCPS already set and mild tear. That's the reason why I will do make a hemi, mass, a hemi double switch operation together with the hemi setting, uh, hemi, hemi setting Procedure together with the middle uh, moderate size of right ventricle to PA, uh, right ventricle to PA contact. If possible, direct anosmosis between the pulmonary valve, so using the native pulmonary valve and the right ventricle. Okay. And if uh, so, you are saying if the patient has no TR, mm -hmm. here with the safety margin of the 
opposition world, a quotation height of the strikers world at the time. So I cannot decide which is better, <laughs> surgery or movie. <laughs> yeah, if the patient has less uh, uh, acceptable, so a uh, uh, coaptation height of the trichus guard, mild and moderate, less than moderate, but the, if the trichus guard morphology is not so perfect at the time, I would like to make her thumb. So that's double, double switch type operation. So your decision is depend on the sciences and also the TR degree. Right? Sorry. Not on yes. the age of the patient. Uh, exact morphology of the trichus bar, especially on the coaptation condition of the tricuspid, mm -hmm. because if the patient has moderate cyanosis, we would like to add the ink, we uh, would like to increase the primary blood flow to get the more saturation. At the time, maybe the patient will have a trichus regurgitation more. So I do choose maybe double switch type operation, including the hemi double switch. Okay. Okay, Dr. Weda, are you ready? Uh, but sorry, we got, we, we need uh, the the uh, authorization token to present our presentation. Now the token is on the APCIS. Please give us the ball. The ball is on APCIS. So please give us a ball. Uh, next APCIS. Yes, screen. We're gonna share our screen. The web expose is on APCIS. APCIS. So yes. Can I say something in between before you start? Yeah, yeah. Deon, go. Yeah, yeah. Omar, you can comment. Yeah. Um, the, the issue is, in this case, uh, I would have also a problem of decision making. Mm -hmm. But uh, many, many times in pediatric cardiology, the age matters. Now this patient has uh, like balanced uh, situation, but he's 16 years old. So if you want to do Fontan, this is already the maximum age usually when you can do Fontan. I would do Fontan. And later, I might change my mind. I didn't lose much for this child. But if I wait too long and I decide to do Fontan, I, only with high risk. No. Okay, um, Dr. Weda, you can try. Please no. okay. presented a ball to not Yui Weda, but uh, Shizuoka team. Speaker will be Yui Weda, but uh, presentation will be from Shizuoka team. So please move the ball to Shizuoka team. Okay. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. You, we, we hear you well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Let's go. Let's go. I'm Yui Ueda from Shizuoka, Japan. Since this April, I moved to the other hospital, so I'm speaking from Narita, and my slide is share screen from Shizuoka. Mm -hmm. My comment is going to be on aortic translocation in collected TGA with our actual case. Next slide. This patient is collected TGA with SLA and DSD. Also, she she has straddling mitral valve and Epstein-like deformation of tricuspid valve with severe TR. She referred to Shizuoka in 25, and she went on Fontan track because of her complex intracardiac anatomy. Initially, she underwent 
Tia Banding and by Directioner Glenn, and in 26, when she was six years old, PCPC and TB plus T were done. Since she had good main pulmonary artery in right side, that PCPC was created extra, extra cardiac, and her main PA and IVC were anas, anas, anatomous directly with patch augmentation. And her tricuspid valve was almost closed. This next slide. This is a follow-up angio two years later. The TCPC root looked, looked good. However, because of intracardiac volume reduction after pontan, subaortic RVOTO was developed and BSD got smaller around five millimeter in diameter. Pulmonary valve was completely closed with the cusp sutured and the pressure in morphological left ventricle went high. Subsequently, MR developed to moderate grade. Next slide. So we decided to perform aortic translocation to relieve the outflow tract obstruction as well as repair of mitral valve in 29. The conduction tissue, non-branching bottle from the usual anterior AV node in SLL CTGA was suspicious to run on the right underside through the outlet septum. So upper half of the outer septum was cut and the both coronary buttons are transected. And the anterior part of the original aortic root was plicated. Also, she had bundles of abnormal cold tissue from the anterior mitral leaflet to the outer septum. So they removed the, and the commissure close to the origin of abnormal cause was sutured to reduce the mitral regurgitation. A resected aortic root was reconnected right posteriorly to the original PA side with its half turn, and the coronaries were re-implanted. Next slide. This is a summary of the procedure, pre and post. Further comment on the conduction system and its electrophysiological study will be added from another panel later. Next slide. And these are ECGs, pre and post. She is now 19 years old. She has already originally junctional rhythm with her P wave embodied in two, uh, second and third and AVF leads, but her PR interval has not changed. That's all. Thank you. Oh, excellent case. <laughs> oh, very interesting case. Any comment from the other panelists? So actually, the patient's uh, candidate for uh, single ventricle repair, but uh, as the as time passed, the uh, VST size is decreasing, so you need uh, something. So you tr try the half turn operation, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, okay, Dr. Sakamoto. Just a moment, just a moment, just please go ahead. Yeah, so can I, uh, so I, I would like to have a, uh, I would like to add one comment. Uh, this patient has, uh, 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 this patient was, had to be the candidate for a prompt time because of the mitral valve, mitral valve's uh, normality mm -hmm. and other. However, so after prompt time compression, the patient interventricular communication size is decreased, decreased. That's the reason why I did make this operation. At the same time, so before the aortic translocation, I uh, imaged 
I have I have an image. So the Dams case sense procedure is uh, one of choice or not. However, so as the uh, uh, as the last from China operation, I did close the primary bar after PA banding. That's the reason why the primary bar condition is not so perfect. Maybe so the primary bar will have the primary degradation after dams case and so uh, dams case and procedure. During the operation, I did check the primary bar condition after opening the after opening the primary bar. The bar condition is not so good. That's the reason why I moved the this procedure. However, I I I I I, I don't I could not believe that cutting the reception is reasonable or not. <laughs> That's the reason why this procedure. And I did set the air tra translated located air bar is a little bit higher than normal. A little bit higher. And uh, the so conduction tissue, uh, no, no, so corner septum, so upper half rejected. Conduction, uh, so corner septum is almost floating now mm. under the translocated aortic bar. You can understand that's a, that's a, that's a tricky case. But uh, this one is a tricky, but uh, one of the maybe so future choice. So, yeah, if uh, we cannot make an image to uh, uh, to, 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 to prevent the block, a comp uh, so conduction block. At that time, a little bit higher position, translocation, and large ventricular out touching. That's one of the choices. That's the reason why this presentation. Uh, yes. so, yeah. so, uh, uh, yes, go to speaking. I think it's uh, back to the surgeon's uh, case. Mm -hmm. So I think it, uh, so after you decided to do the, what kind of operations for this case? I think that since the patient has already in a BCPS, mm -hmm. so I think the Korean uh, doctor was reported a uh, good result of the hemi master's operation for the CCTGA mm -hmm. uh, in their series. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, one of the choices of hemi masters. I don't, I don't know how to do it that same same setting, uh, setting this procedure for these cases. But I think it's uh, another one, another uh, uh, choices is a back to like an anatomical repair, or even though they have already in a PCPS. I don't know, I, I am not a cardiac surgeon, but I think I don't know, uh, is, it, is it possible for the cardiac surgeon to fix to the anatomical repair after this in a case? Yeah. This one? Uh, this patient has already PCPS state, so it's easier for performing uh, the Rustley type operation in this patient. But nowadays, in our hospital, Dr. Chang Ali prefer the, the half tongue instead of Rustley operation because we experienced many cases of Rustley K, the redo RB2PA conduit. It's very difficult to make a uh, conduit, but after we performing a half turn, it's very easy to talk. Okay? Yeah. How about the other center's uh, strategy for performing a type operation? Bikaido or uh, half turn? Uh, Sakamoto uh, said about the uh, uh, technique of the aortic translocations. Uh, I think the uh, CCTJ patients, uh, I think, uh, prefer the only aortic root uh, translocation instead of the aortic uh, half turn because the uh, some risk of the uh, heart flow. So I like to do the only uh, posterior aortic translocation okay, technique. Uh, in case of a pulmonary valve annulus is uh, good, and uh, not, not, not too small. Okay. If it is too, too narrow, 
no advantage to push the aorta to the posterior side, right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. This is a tricky case. So have you ever tried the the, the half tongue surgery in early infants? Uh, for it's a hard issue in <laughs> Sejong now. <laughs> CCTG? Yes, yeah, and uh, in last week we perform uh, uh, aortic translocation in uh, seven weeks old baby with uh, complete TJ VSDPS. Aortic translocation for the TGA together with the last uh -huh. uh, one three. and I had once uh, aortic translocation for the patient with the CCTG, mm -hmm. just one case. Yeah. And uh, so I, I have, so just after operation, the patient had the so heart block. <laughs> and uh, several days later, the uh, conduction recovered. But the uh, EQ interval is longer than normal. <laughs> Maybe just, uh, just, uh, yeah, just near, I stitched just near the conductor mm -hmm. or cut the just near. I don't know exactly, but uh, maybe so, so preventing the, so preventing the uh, conduction damage is not so <clears throat> easy, not so easy. Maybe possible, but not so easy, not constantly. Okay, and uh, another issue is uh, when we perform the Likaido uh, M block half tongue operation, coronary anomaly is also a problem. So the uh, when the RCA from LAD and RCA crossing <coughs> the RV afro track. It may be difficult to perform uh, Nick Guido. How about this? Actually, I think the coronary, pro, uh, coronary uh, anatomy is uh, coronary artery anatomy is very very important for considering the uh, aortic root translocation type operations. Uh, actually, uh, Nick Guido operation is uh, some uh, 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 limitation for the handling of the coronary artery. But uh, we need to the uh, out in root translocation, uh, not a uh, I think the, we can uh, more uh, some uh, room for the avoiding uh, uh, that problems. Uh, maybe I think. But uh, in half ton cases, uh, aortic valve problem is. Uh, yeah, so actually uh, I, I, I performed the uh, aortic root uh, translocation type operations. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, some uh, patients with uh, aortic uh, valve regurgitations. Actually, this is some uh, problem in uh, long-term follow-up. Yeah, so actually I want to about the, uh, your experience. So before we move to the uh, case five, I would like to ask one more question to the all panelists. Uh, have you ever tried the arterial switch and sending in CCTJ VSDPS or uh, TJ VSDPS? Have you ever tried the arterial switch operation? And in what, in which case you try the arterial switch operation instead of a rastelli type operation? Any any panelist can talk. No, nobody tried. Arterial switch operation in CCTJ, uh, uh, TJ VSTPS. Okay. Okay, then we move on to the next case, case five. We skip case four. 
Case five will be presented by Dr. Yun. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Good, Woman good doctor. Yeah, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for here our webinar. Um, yeah. I'm Jagyong Yun from Sejong Hospital. Let's uh, move last case. In this case, we will discuss about CCPGA and heart failure in adult patients. A 52-year-old male patient was initially diagnosed as CCPGA VSD dextrocardia deep sinus syndrome. He underwent VSD cruise operation at uh, 19 years old and VVI pacemaker insertion for complete AV block in other hospital. We couldn't determine whether this block was natural or post-operative complication. There is a no record. This is the first discussion issue. As you know, the anatomical disposition of the cardiac conduction system is different in the two forms of CCPGA. Those with the usual atrial arrangement versus those with Miller imaged arrangement of atrial appendage. Uh, we will discuss AV block issue and how can we, uh, we avoid iatrogenic AV, uh, complete AV block. Okay, I'd like to call on uh, next panelist, uh, Dr. Yoshimoto from Shizuoka. How can you avoid AV block in CCTJ operation? Can you make a comment? Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. Then, uh, okay, can you see this? Yep, we can see the slide. Okay, now, um, because I'm short, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna quickly uh, review the, 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 the papers and also the, the, the we're going to show what we are doing now. Okay, so uh, as you know, the the in a in a cytosurgical type called PTGA, um, the the anterior AV node is locating in in an anterior to the, the mitral valve, and the, the conduction tissue go alongside the, the pulmonary artery. This is the uh, uh, original paper in 1973. And also in a certain inverse type, uh, the, the Vampira reported that the conduction system, uh, the AV node is at the post, uh, located posteriorly <coughs> and then and, and locate uh, alongside the, the VSD. Okay, now this is the, uh, the big two papers and usually the, the many surgeons, everybody obey this one. But as you already know that, um, need to provide the exceptions to every rule. So many doctors experience the, the, the exceptions. So now in Shizuoka, we, uh, uh, when we see the correct TGA case, then um, we make the, the 3D model of the heart and investigate the anatomy. And also the, especially if the VSA enlargement is mandatory, then uh, 3D electrical anatomical mapping system, which is used in uh, ablation, is um, useful to understand the, uh, the actual uh, conduction system. Also, it, there is some limits. But, um, and also, we do the electrophysiological study for during cathedral exam to check the AV node and also the, the, the function of the AV node or if, if there are any signs of AV block. And also, the, every time we do the the, uh, the the catheter examination for these cases, then uh, we do the the ETS. And um, also, the, after the double switch operation, such case has the uh, the flatter or some other uh, supraventricular tachycardia, then we're gonna we don't test it catheter ablation. Uh, I'm going to show some um, typical case, and this is a quick easy case, and we do make the, 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 the 3D printer model. Actually, and this is the, uh, just the, the, the images in the computer, but we print the, the, every uh, part. 
and also we print the uh, the the master model to see the the actual position of the the palmar artery, um, and also we see it inside, and the, the to estimate the the uh, conduction system, and we're gonna look into the uh, from. Uh, the ventricle and see the pulmonary artery, and uh, we're gonna examine uh, how the conduction system will go. In this typical case, we, uh, the conduction system will go uh, typical, uh, as is uh, described in textbook, that uh, the conduction system go to, uh, alongside the pulmonary artery. And also, in, in some cases, we use the uh, 3D anatomical mapping system to see the his electrogram and we tag the his electrogram like this. And we see the how the his electrogram goes through this. And we check the direction of the conduction from the uh, anterior to the, uh, the parking system like this. And then we can also uh, superimpose these tags onto the uh, intercardic echo or eyes. You know, then uh, we see how the, the conduction system goes and inform the, the surgeons about this. And that, that will help the, how to uh, make the decision about the enlargement of VSD or uh, do the laser type operation. And also, uh, we, uh, when we see the uh, supraventricular tachycardia, then we use the, uh, the eyes and also CT to do the operation for these cases like this. Okay, this is a short comment from the electrophysiologist. Oh, thank you so Hello. much. Oh, your team is excellent. <laughs> your surgeon may be very satisfied with your support. Okay, please keep on. Yeah. Presentation. Yeah, of course. Okay. I do make the function as Dr. Yoshimoto says. <laughs> I, do, I do make with the closure as Yoshimoto says. <laughs> okay, this is uh, that's all. My, uh, that's all my presentation. Okay, please move on to the next speakers or next panels, please. Okay, Dr. Let's move next. At age of 15 years, he admitted to, to congestive heart failure. He started heart failure medication, including diuretics and AC inhibitor. His baseline EKG showed AP with V pacing. His pro BMP was elevated up to 400, and his functional class was grade 3. This is his echocardiography performed at times. His heart with mesocardia and cytosolic CCTJ. You can see the moderate PR and mild morphologic RV dysfunction measured EF, about EF uh, put, uh, 30, uh, 34%. And also, we can find interventricular and intraventricular dyssynchrony. This is RA and morphologic LV and pulmonary trunk. You can see the uh, pacemaker is in here and he had mild PR. We performed the CT. We can find atrial ventricular discordance and ventricular atrial uh, discordance called double discordance. And morphologic RV EF is 41% and morphologic RV EF is about 49% by dual phase CT. Uh, this is the cardiac cassette, cass 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 data. Morphologic RV EDP was 12 millimeter mercury, and systemic RV contractility was back visually poor, and cardiac output was poor. Morphologic RV angiography showed severe PR and poor contractility. But morphologic RV contractility was good with mild MR. This is the coronary angiographic image. We checked level page for CS and coronary venous course because we planned a CRP later. This patient's problem is heart failure with CCTJ conventional repair and severe PR and complete AV block. What's the, what is the next, your next option for this patient? 
considering pacemaker induced cardiomyopathy component in this patient can be the CRT helpful? If you think it's helpful, what order would be good? There is a multiple there are multiple options. Okay, you can answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move on. Finally, we decided CRT the upgrade at first. Considering, uh, considering difficulties to positioning CS lead in CCTGA coronary sinus anatomy, we needed backup plan to insert epicardial LV pacing lead. Morphologic LV coil lead was positioned on morphologic LV non apex, and RA lead was positioned in RA appendices through LSVC, and the LV lead was positioned at posterior leg lateral vein of LV through LSVC. CRTD was inserted successfully with slightly high uh, threshold of LV lead. This is the post-CRT echo. You can see the systemic RV function was slightly improved and systemic RV looked more synchronous. Uh, this is EKG. In EKG, QRS duration was decreased from 133 to 102 millisecond. However, this patient has severe heart failure because of severe tear. What is your next option for this patient? Also, there, is, there are multiple uh, options. Uh, next, uh, this is the panel discussion issue second. Yeah, actually, uh, nowadays, uh, we have uh, many adult congenital heart patients. One of the issues is the systemic right ventricle failure, especially in CCTJ cases. We try the CRT, sometimes uh, tricuspid repair or replacement, but we don't know the timing and which one is first. Actually, this patient's uh, admitted recently in our hospital, so I'd like to ask the panels about the adult patients with the systemic right ventricle failure cases. What, are, what do you try? Uh, have more answers. Any, any panelists? Me? Yeah. Okay. Omar? Okay. Well, uh, I'm really uh, com confused. Uh, like, I wouldn't really know what to do because I didn't never saw patients like this before. Mm -hmm. But, but for me, the first thought would be prepare for heart transplant because I don't see a clear possible option. But this is because I'm not so experienced in this situation. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, may I share? Yeah, yeah. Orkan. Yeah. So uh, our, I mean, our group actually uh, put the transplantation on the first list, uh -huh. because uh, as Omar said, you know, peer banding in 55 years of age, I'm not sure whether the result would be good or not. So um, yeah. So I, so I think first of all, we put it, the patient in, in the transplant list, and secondly. If uh, we can buy the time, we may try to, to uh, you know, to negotiate this with peer banding, uh, but we need to be ready to deband if uh, the condition gets worse. So that's that's our thought. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah good comment. If the patient is younger, we can try the banding to reduce the TR, but this patient is too old. So yeah. Yeah. Please show us Sejong's experience. Please keep it. Uh, ventricular assist device, not only as a bridge, but also a uh, permanent. Mm -hmm. mm. okay. Yes, let's come back to this patient. Finally, we under, uh, he underwent TBR with mechanical valve at uh, 52 years old. However, he experienced difficult 
post-operative cause, including hyperbilirubinemia, decreased IV function, acute renal failure. However, finally, he discharges with improved condition. This is his last echocardiography. We can find good mechanical valve motion uh, with IV EF 58%. We should, but we should prepare next plan for heart failure. This is my last slide. Heart disease. So uh, this is a big issue in our hospital. Uh, but we have not enough time, so the, I would like to invite the panel. Uh, next issue is actually the in CCTJ based PS. Some centers try the Fontaine operation instead of biventricular repair. So the I would like to call on the Suzuka team again, MRI expert. Uh, Dr. Sat Sato, yeah, can you tell us about the uh, MRI evaluation for decision making? Yes. Actually, in Sejong, in early 1990s, in cases of uh, unbalanced AVSD, we try. We, we usually perform Fontaine track, but nowadays we start to change our strategy to perform biventricular repair. So I think the MRI is the best tool to evaluate the. The, our strategy. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Uh, with this team, uh, we can just, just uh, finish this try. No. Yes. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Right. Can you try again? Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Just a moment. So sorry about the inconvenience. Okay, then. Okay. okay. So how about this? Oh. Nope. Oops. Then um. So yes. And then uh, how about this? Oh yeah. Okay. You can see the slide. Okay, thanks. Uh, we can uh, measure uh, blood flow and ventricular volume. So uh, relatively a small left ventricular case. Uh, maybe you know many institutes uh, use CMR in clinician. Uh, here is our uh, experience. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now he's 14 years old male, and uh, diagnosis is uh, congenital corrective TGA, BSD, uh, primary stenosis, and small, relatively small left ventricle. Uh, here is a uh, catheterization. Uh, sorry, please. Uh, the case is uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, family has hesitated to operation, but uh, his desaturation had progressed. Then uh, we did CMR for him uh, at eight years, three months old. Uh, here is a transverse CNA fold. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, at eight years, three months of age, uh, his left ventricular and diastolic problem index is 
45.1, really small one, and left ventricular heart index is 2.2, and left ventricular mass index is 38.2. Very small left ventricle. And next slide, please. We think maybe this LV is too small to do by ventricular repair, but family had tested to offer it. So we wait for a couple of years, but his excellent intolerance has progressed. So again, we did CMR at 12 years, three months of age. But left ventricular and diastole volume is 42.3, and left ventricular heart index is 2.4, left ventricular mass index 25.6. So our decision is to, is, was toward open care. Next slide, please. So we did, because of the left pulmonary artery is very narrow, and so we did the SVC arm care anastomosis and RQ septation with nasal acute patch. Next slide, please. And after that, we did the CMR at 13 years old, 10 months of age. Left ventricular in that bone index is 41.9, and left ventricular artery index is 1.0. And left ventricular mass index is 21.3. Next slide, please. Maybe for those cases, estimation of left ventricular cardiac index is the key to decide which one to repair, spontaneous repair or by ventricular repair. Cardiac index is targeted from the left ventricular drop volume and heart rate. So we calculate for, by, from the left cardiac index from same measurement and heart rate in daily life. And regarding to the artery regularization or mitral regularization or outcome collaterals, we estimate the true cardiac index from left ventricular cardiac index. And that's all my comments. So we use CMR for relatively small left ventricular cardiac index. Okay. So when you calculate the LV volume, you just... Maybe you remember the Dr. Shijun Yu visited the APCIS previously. He told us how small is small, and he considered after the bivancular repair, ventricular septum shifts to the RV size, so the LV volume is may increase. So the in Shizuoka team, you calculate like that or just the how can you calculate the LV volume? After after by ventricular repair, after after. Ah, yeah, we 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 did this. We don't usually think about such simulation. Yeah, or about the shift to the IVS first. But as Dr. Sato mentioned before, static LV volume at that time and static LV volume and combination of static LV volume and cardiac index of LV and LV mass index. The three combination is our choice, but our but we don't establish our standards to go go for bioenergy repair. So anyway, so so can I have one comment? Anyway, so if the 
LV is used under systemic ventricle at the time, borderline is very uh, difficult to use. Uh, 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 borderline, borderline surgery is difficult to decide. I can use this one or not. Because after the VSC closure, if the left ventricular performance is not perfect or un unexpected, at the time, the ventricular so systemic circulation is not so controlled. Well, that's the reason why. So, uh, so our Shizuoka team has the safety margin to estimate the right ventricular size. So, after we the closure and the systemic pressure can make your right ventricular size increase. However, now, so uh, we will have a safety margin to uh, to decide to, uh, using a red ventricle as a systemic ventricle or not. That's the reason why. So we are we are having a, a little bit safety margin to use the borderline left ventricle. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your comment. So the I would like to call on our last panelist, Dr. Satoshi Yasukochi. Uh, in this case, uh, sometimes we need the uh, biventricular repair. So previously we performed Fontaine operation, but we can now try the biventricular repair. So the, can you comment with your slides? Uh, how can I share the slides? Just see the, I'm not sure. Uh, number third one. You can push content. Okay, there we yeah, go. Yeah, Con contents. Sure. Yes. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, you can see a slide. Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, so let's get started. So I think that the issue is a converted the one ventricle repair to like two ventricle circulations. You can use this. The why converted the two ventricle repairs? Is it real or just illusions? I think it's uh, everybody believe the two ventricle uh, circulation is better than one ventricle uh, circulation because of the higher in a cardiac output, in a lower in a CVP. You know, less mobility, uh, longer longevity, and improve healthy daily life with an exercise and tolerance. So indication for the converted one ventricle to like a two ventricle repair is a uh, case six, is uh, we need to consider the two, uh, two factors. One is a uh, LV pump function to support the systemic circulations. And this is for like now, the cases are, you know, LV EDV was a very 35 cc per square meters is a a little bit smaller, and ejection function is less, uh, about only about 43%, which was decreased. And plus, they have side anomaly in the city valve regurgitations. And another issue is that intraventricular rerouting. So, how can surgeon was in a intraventricular rerouting can be made uh, through an IV to VS through VSC to the aortic root, or in the presence of the subaortic stenosis. So this is the outcome. It, uh, the report uh, was made by the uh, National Vascular Cardio Centers in Japan. Is that they were reported the uh, outcome the one and a half to uh, two ventricular conversion from for the patient initially treated with a single ventricular variations. They reported nine cases. So which uh, most of the cases was the indication the conversion was in a protein losing enteropathy or some other in a severe pulmonary artery venous amalgamation and so on. So. They will uh, say, you know, most of the uh, nine of, uh, I think that uh, they will, you know, uh, six of the uh, nine cases will survive, you know, live, and also in the PRE was improved. But I think that uh, they lost in the three cases. Two was early death and one is a late death. So, and also like uh, this is another paper was reported, you know, hemodynamic parameters predict the worst in outcome following by ventricular conversion was a single ventricular variation breakdown. So this is the cases that have 
hypoplastic left heart syndromes. But I think that they say AV EDP is more than 13 millimeter of mercury, or post-operative RV ventricular pressure is uh, more than uh, two, two and two thirds of the AV ventricular was the ominous sign of to the bad uh, uh, predictions. So one ventricular repair versus you know, two ventricular repairs, which is better? This is another case report. Two ventricular are not better than one in the fontan situations or equivalent to late outcome. They say 99, 79 cases of two adequate ventricles versus 11, 1,291 cases with a one ventricle repair, they compare to the outcome. So this picture shows that no such a difference. Even those the left dominant in the one ventricle and the right dominant one ventricle is almost the same. And also, like you know, they say, by ventricular repair versus the fontan completions is also for patients with a D or L transposition of the great artery with ventricular septal defect and left ventricular output tract obstruction. Was they say the fontan versus by ventricular repair is not so much difference. Only the difference is. Uh, but uh, they say the probability of the survivals and the post uh, intervention free survivals. So, this is a bipedal repair is less because of the sometimes the bipedal repair has uh, uh, some of the uh, adverse in the effect after the uh, repairs, such as an increase in the CVP and so on. So, they conclude in patients with a severe and complex diagnosis of the DTGA or LTGA, BSE, LVOT, bipedal and fontan strategy appear to result in a comparable medium to, uh, term survival and a functional class. And although our data is reflected only in many, medium term follow-up, they suggest that the fontan palliation may be considered as a good long-term option for the patient with anatomical features that preclude by ventricular circulations. So my opinion for the case six is that less likely to be converted to ventricular repair because of the small LV and subtracts about problems. Mm -hmm. And also some of the issues of the interventional route from the LV to aorta because uh, I don't know the cases has a uh, position of the VSC and the size of the VSCs yet. So this is my comment for the case six. Okay, thank oh. you. This is a very tough issue, challenging issue for us. But nowadays we experienced uh, uh, fontan failure, failing, failing cases, so the we should consider the biventricular conversion. In last case, uh, you pointed out the uh, LB2 aorta baffling may uh, make the problem, but nowadays uh, Chang Ali has a good skill for uh, M block, half turn. So the, in some difficult cases, we can make it basically baffling easier and uh, not occupying the RV volume. So the, anyway, it, it's a very challenging issue. <laughs> okay, any other panelists have comment about the biventricular conversion in Fontan case? We have several cases, uh, CTJ based PS, little bit hypoplastic left ventricle size, but we are now considering biventricular <laughs> conversion. Okay, anyway, uh, we have already <laughs> 30 minutes behind <laughs> on the schedule. So I'd like to thank you for all the audience and all the speakers, panelists. I hope uh, this webinar may be helpful for your decision making. Uh, I'm sorry about uh, some trouble shooting <laughs> during the webinar, but next time we'll make it better. Thank you so much and stay good, healthy. Like <laughs> good job. Thank you. Uh, just, Thank just you. Last, last, last word. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, thanks for holding this. This is very important meeting. I think joining a uh, cardiology surgeon and you know everyone all together. So please continue. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Arkan. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, and well done. Okay. Thank you. Well done. Bye bye.
Until next time. Okay. And you did great efforts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.